Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of a Welcome Descent by Cam Wolf. So Cam Wolf is from Page Nomad here on Booktube. I've read some of Cam's stuff before. I read Alone Among the Gung Trees, I think it was called, or Along Among the Gum Trees, I can't remember, um, which was in Local Haunts. And I've also read Bob's and Virgin, actually, which was like a bit of a novelty project he worked on a little while back. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts on racing at the end. Oh, this is for Todd and Danes, Indie Read Along, 10 points if you remember those. Um, right, blurb, all it takes is one bad week. In just seven days, Joseph Ridley lost everything. His beautiful wife, gone. His fast car's gone. Even the expensive suits, they're all gone now. Life's a bitch and it has treated Joe unfairly. Now there's a storm on the horizon, a storm unlike any other. Long buried memories and voices from the dark are at the door. Joseph is about to find out that rock bottom is not the furthest a man can fall. The storm has arrived. So Joe is like this very unlikable character um, and it's quite a dark story. Uh, so it comes with a content warning at the front which I think is quite cool because I, I don't really see those in books that often. Uh, so it says, please be aware that this book contains strong adult themes, including but not limited to graphic and sexual violence, self-harm, alcoholism, and hateful language. And I think this is quite relatable uh, for any introverts out there. Um, almost as quickly as it had happened, it was forgotten, and Joe was pocketing his keys and wallet at the door. This was his least favourite part of the day, opening the door and stepping into the hallway to leave for work. There were at least six hours and numerous social interactions between that door closing behind him and it opening in front of him once again. Six long hours before his home would be welcoming him back with a short glass of Glenfiddich and an episode of Cheers. Like plunging into icy waters, Joe took a deep breath and wrenched it open. And then uh, Joe has a cigarette and we get this line, The joy of his smoky breakfast gave Joe the confidence to bring his eyes to street level and observe the people rushing past him. I like that line, the smoky joy, or whatever it was. So I like that line, uh, the smoky breakfast line, but also it's followed by this. Uh, uh, most were rosy red in the cheeks, huffing as they lugged bags of canned food and water to their destinations. Some carried a year's supply of toilet paper under their arms. Fucking panic buyers. So by that alone we can tell this is quite recent. <laughs> Either that or it's like when Emily St. John Mandel predicted that in uh, Station Eleven. <laughs> and we start to get this sort of almost Groundhog uh, Day sense of time's kind of repeating itself. This storm's rolling in and uh, I'm not sure if it's ever said explicitly, but I certainly read it as Joe basically gets uh, plunged into hell via this storm and somebody else gets their own little personal hell later on at the, at the end of the novel as well. But um, yeah, because of that, he's, it's sort of like a cross between High Rise by J.G. Ballard, where it's all set in like this, this apartment block because everything goes batshit and kind of Groundhog Day because it's kind of the day we keeps repeating itself. We get uh, Romero Public School, I wondered if that was a nod to uh, George Romero. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I tabbed out quite a lot in this was uh, the use of song lyrics and songs, like they play uh, important parts in the narrative but also it's just nice to see them quoted and, and to be like, oh yeah, I know that song. So we get, I'm sorry that I made you cry, oh my, I didn't want to hurt you, I'm just a jealous guy, which is Jealous Guy by John Lennon. Uh, I don't know whether Pam, uh, Cam might have had the Roxy music version in mind, I don't know. But John Lennon for life. And we start to learn more and more about some of the sketchy stuff that, that Joe has done in the past. He's not a likeable character at all. In many ways he kind of deserves all he gets and I, I don't know if I actually wanted him to be redeemed at the end. So another great song choice here. Well it's alright if you've got someone to love. Well it's alright, we're going to the end of the line. Travelling Wilburys. And uh, Joe's then talking about his past life, he says, uh, When Pam got pregnant, I damn near shit myself, I swear to God. I got spooked real bad. Started thinking about all the stuff we couldn't do anymore. I couldn't fucking believe it. I just got promoted at this advertising firm too. Some real high level data entry shit. And I'm like, I don't know if there is such a thing as high level data entry. Like data entry is usually entry level, you know? And then, um, I don't know what happened, but it changed at some point. Don't get me wrong, I love Pam and I love the kids' shit. I would go out of my way to flip for the lighter shifts at work just to take them to the park for the day. But again, at an advertising agency, you would just work nine to five or, you know, nine to six or whatever. Um, 
especially in a senior position, although I still don't buy that there's a senior data entry position. Uh, we get a head hop in one of the scenes with day one as well, where it's written from uh, Joseph's point of view, but then we get day one watched as the 40 something year old man covered in bandages curled into a ball and cried. It was not pretty or reserved like he'd seen in the movies. It was red faced, snotty and wailing. His heart ached to watch, knowing nothing he could do or say would ever ease this man's pain. Perhaps he had no right to. Uh, and then it jumps back to Joe's point of view, so that was just a little bit jarring. Alright, hello, I am back. It is probably not the following day, the day after that. Had a bad anxiety day yesterday. It happens. Uh, and also I've got my hair over my face because I have a big spot. Oh, don't draw attention to the spot. Right, let's go find some more of these tabs. There's only a few more here. I like the layout here. Uh, it says, you are cold, you, you are cold, you are cold. The ground is an unknown distance away, but rushing towards you all the same. You, reading this now, regret, anticipation. So it's quite a cool layout, it's almost like poetic layout, I don't think it's going to pick that up there. Uh, what I will say is like, I was always taught it's bad practice to like address the reader directly as you, and I think Cam did it somewhere else as well, where it, where it, it was just a line about like, I don't know, the feeling you get on a cold morning or something, whereas technically it should be the feeling one gets, I guess? But then that reads kind of badly. I always just avoid it in my own writing, to be honest, because I don't have the answer to that. But the theory is, is if you directly address the reader as you, then it draws their attention to the fact that it's an author speaking to a reader and kind of pulls them out of the story. And it did kind of do that, but mainly because I know that's supposed to be a rule as opposed to because, of, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a bit like the story of like the traveling priests or whatever who converted heathens to Christianity and were like, uh, you go to heaven if you're good and hell if you're bad. And they're like, would we have gone to hell if we didn't know about it? And the guy's like, of course not. No, then you would have been a heathen and you know, you would have been fine, you would have been forgiven. So they're like, why did you tell us this? And that rule is like that. Now that I've been told that rule, I see it everywhere and it just, does my fruit, but otherwise I probably wouldn't notice. And uh, I want to read this, this the uh, opening paragraph to Just One Week, chapter 16. So it was interestingly written and um, I mean Joe does go through a lot of character development as well and he starts out as somebody that you just really don't like and by the end there is a little bit of sympathy there and maybe a little bit of redemption as well. So uh, the city street looked much the same as it did when Joseph had stood here just three months ago smoking a cigarette and waiting for his last day of work to begin, though he had not known that at the time. The pavement was still crowded with people rushing from corner to corner, arms stuffed with shopping bags, their eyes glued to the smartphone in their hand. Joe used to hate the city, the crowds, the suffocating stench of exhaust fumes and smog. Had he not been so repulsed and bored by the countryside, he might have chosen to live somewhere other than a bustling metropolitan area. The truth was that he hated the way strangers could stare, like they had you figured out. He despised being watched, but boy did Joseph love being seen. He'd been quite content hiding away with a bottle of whiskey and a TV remote, but every now and then you had to get out and remind people you had money and power, everything they did not have. He saw people as a virus, one that he would never truly control. They were unpredictable, dangerous. Yeah, people are a virus, to be fair. Then we have an epilogue. We uh, get a reference to, there is a house in New Orleans they call the Rising Sun, the animals. Uh, and then the DJ flips over to Break On Through by The Doors, another great tune. But basically what's happening there is uh, the storm has rolled out of Joe's city, but is, uh, it may be lingering on the horizon for somebody else. And it's very much, for me at least, it read as like the personal hell or whatever uh, and the people get their just desserts so uh, yeah overall I enjoyed it I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5 uh, which is my sort of baseline level for a professionally released book so it's quite hard for an indie to get that to be honest um, I don't know there wasn't anything in it that like particularly blew my mind or anything like that but it was an enjoyable enough read um, like very few mistakes only the couple of like tiny technical mistakes which are only technical mistakes because people say they're technical mistakes so yeah Cam Wolf, Welcome Descent. So there we have it, that's what I made of Welcome Descent by Cam Wolf. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.